He has come on to be a very steady performer for the Rangers. The ground crew has spread some dry sand and Tony La Russa trying to figure out a way to get a run across. It's Dave Duncan behind him. Doug Jones, Saberhagen. Franco, tough to hit with that wet bat and the water dripping off the bill of the helmet. I think you saw one of the members of the grounds crew. He's going down to the American League bullpen. It is becoming slippery. It's not too often that you find the bullpen more slippery than the field. Yeah, one thing there we should is. point out here. This is this is one thing that the umpires will not put up with. First of all, Roger Craig comes out and he might lift Brantley right here. But if the umpires find that there is danger of somebody being injured slipping in the mud, you know, the rain is one thing. But once it gets soggy out there, and the umpires have to think seriously about holding things up. I wonder if we can see the cut on the bridge of the nose of Ed Montague. There's Roger Craig, and he's going to lead Brantley in. That cut on the nose occurred when Vince Coleman of the St. Louis Cardinals slid into second base, was called out by Ed Montague, who was, of course, the second base umpire. And Vince inadvertently came up, and the bill of his hard hat hit the bridge of the nose of Ed Montague. He said that hurt. And no, Coleman, Coleman suffering a seven day suspension as a result. Now they're going to cover the field. That's what I was talking about. Once the umpire deems it dangerous that a pitcher might slip off the mound and hurt himself or something. Here comes Tony La Russa to talk with the umpire to get his thoughts about this situation. First and third nobody out seventh inning no score. The umpire has said uh, we, we're going to need a little work. We're going to cover the field and we're going to repair the field before we resume. And La Russa just wanted to check something with Montague perhaps the batting order or something of the sort. The fans came prepared tonight because all day long it looked as though it was going to rain here in Chicago. There they go to work. This infield will absorb quite a bit of this rain, so it won't be in bad playing shape, but we're going to have a genuine delay here in the top of the seventh inning of scoreless game. Starting time was supposed to be 7.40. It was delayed 15 minutes. It eventually started at 7.55. Well, there'll be some stories swapped. That's the American League bench. And Big Dave Parker. We'll see him before the night's over in all probability. Another look at the fans and the pre preparation that they made for this game. No score. Top of the seventh. American League threatening. First and third. Nobody out. We uh, put the computer to work to get this lineup back together. Ozzie Guillen, Kelly Gruber, Consenco's played the entire game. George Bell has been in there. Uh, Ken Griffey's played the entire game. Cecil Fielder in the lineup, and then uh, Sandy Alomari's caught the entire game. Parrish, who is uh, who has a hit in this game, is a pinch hitter, and then Julio Franco will be batting now as we go back to work. Well, defensively now, Bar Barry Bonds is in left field. He entered the game in the fifth inning. Lynn Dykstra has played the whole game. Daryl Strawberry entered the game, spelling. Andre Dawson, Tim Wallach came in for Chris Sabo, Sean Dunstan is the third National League shortstop. Ozzie Smith started, and then Barry Larkin played. Roberto Alomar in there for Ryan Sandberg. Will Clark, the only first baseman on the National League roster, has to play the whole game unless a guy like Bobby Bonilla goes to first base Mike Sosa still catching and Rob Dibble this should be a great battle right here as Roger Craig is going to play the infield in the runner at third base is Sandy Alomar he started the inning with a base knock and across the diamond it is Lance Parrish he got the pinch single to set it up first and third nobody out and Roger Craig figures that one run might win this one so he's playing the infield not all the way in at second and short but pretty well into the point where they'd have a play on Alomar. Here we go with Dibble you'll see some fire here no score seventh inning. 
And a strike, a blistering fastball from Dibble. I don't think with Franco's bat at the angle that it is that there is any way for him to pull a ball off Rob Dibble. And for that reason, Lynn Dykstra in center field moving over into right center. Franco is 0 for 1 in the game, batting 292 on the season. And a foul ball out of play. That's what you're talking about, Tim. He didn't get around on the smoke, and that's strike two. We had a one hour and eight minute rain delay here at Wrigley Field. And we hope we kept you folks entertained well enough. And now Sosha goes out. He wants this strikeout badly, so they'll be able to play the infield all the way back and hope for the double play ball. Right? I don't know what the score will be, but at the end of this top half of the seventh inning, Harry Carey is going to lead the crowd in the singing of Take Me Out of the Ball Game. That's always fun here at Wrigley Field. Meanwhile, a base hit puts the American League on top. It goes deep, and the second run might also score. Harry's not a good runner, but he is going to be able to dent the plate, and it's two to nothing in favor of the American League as Franco came through on an 0 2 count. When you add up all the elements, there is no way for Julio Franco to pull a ball off a guy like Dibble who throws so hard. But Dibble makes the mistake of finding too much of the plate, and Franco rifles one into right center. Strawberry misses the first cutoff man. He does find Sean Dunstan, but Parrish ends up walking home. See how far Franco has to go with that bat to come back that loop in his swing a mistake by Dibble now as again up the middle advances the runner as the play is to first by Roberto Alomar and the American League could get that third run home and they do even though they've just gathered to have a squeeze play sign Tony La Russa told me before this game started but a good at bat by Ozzie Gian after Ricky Henderson batting in that position was 0 for 3. Now Tony may use a squeeze sign but if I'm Kelly Gruber with 20 home runs on the year I don't want any squeeze sign in my first at bat of the All-Star game. Ooh, in on Kelly Gruber in his first at bat. 296 average 20 home runs 66 runs batted in. Kelly's probably thinking I didn't come from Toronto to bunt. No. <laughs> Runner at third base is Franco and besides it's tough to bunt. Dibble. There is one out and a chopper foul off the plate. Evens the count one and one. American League on top now, two to nothing here in the top of the seventh inning. And Larissa still has a flock of pitchers available to him. Dibble let Franco get off the hook. One and one to Gruber. And a low and away. Nice piece of hitting by Franco after that long delay of more than an hour, an hour and eight minutes. And even though he had two strikes, he got the job done. Now he's at third with one out. <laughs> two and two. They had a clock on him, Tim, on Dibble on some of his pitches in this inning. The second pitch to Julio Franco, Dibble threw 99 miles an hour. 230 pounds, 6'3". He's a part of this story now. He gave up the hit. The runs charged to Brentley. The count three and two on Gruber. Dibble mostly a setup man for Randy Myers. How many times does a reliever as a setup man get into an all-star game? Now Gruber, it's a foul. And by the way, two genuine relief pitchers from the same club, and that's a rarity. Certainly is. Randy Myers. And Rob Dibble and Jack Armstrong, who started this game, 14 strikeouts per nine innings, 75 strikeouts in 48 and a third innings. Three and two to Gruber. And he walked him. So the American League could keep this inning going. Now you've got something coming up. There's Tony LaRusso. His club is broken on top here in the seventh, two to nothing. And guess who Dibble's pitching against? Jose Canseco. Want to watch some power pitching and power swinging? We'll have it here. 
and Seiko all for two with a walk and a stolen base. First and third with one out. National League looking for the double play, so Gruber runs and no throw, a stolen base as Sosha dropped the ball. And that takes care of the double play. Now let's see if they walk Conseco again. Well, the funny thing as Gruber steals a base, certainly the the turf here at Wrigley Field is not the best running conditions. Ball on the count. Second and third one out. And a fly ball might drop. No, it carries out to the right fielder. A tag and a throw by Strawberry at the plate. He is out on the most exciting play of the All-Star game. And it ends the inning. A great throw by Strawberry. And Sosa's one of the best at making the tag. Two runs, three hits, and one man left. Some throw. Exceptionally strong throw because Strawberry puts himself in a position to throw. Mike Sosia is the best in the business at blocking the plate, and that's exactly what he does, stopping Julio Franco. He hasn't touched the plate yet. If he did, he knocked his foot away. Sosia is the best in the business at that particular play, and the throw coming in from the right side is the toughest for a catcher because you don't know where the runner is. Harry Carey. People will always come and go in our lives, but we all know those few who never left. The partners who've always had you covered. That friend you consider the best, because that's how they make you feel. At Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois, we know what it means to be there, guiding you toward a healthier state of mind. Because the more we know as individuals, the healthier we all feel as a community. Through it all. Unexpectedly, she had to do open heart surgery. It was definitely a tense time. It was good to just come here and feel a little normal <laughs> and to get a nice hot meal and like, a nice warm bed. It helps you bring strength to your family. No matter what's ahead, I know that Ronald McDonald House will be there for us. They're like family, so they'll, they'll take care of us. This is internet stuff, streaming stuff, social stuff. You want it, you need it. And wow is the best way to enjoy it. Switch to save on all your favorite stuff with a super fast internet connection for a price that's really something to see. $34.99 per month guaranteed for two years. And when you sign up today, get a $100 Visa prepaid reward card. There has never been a better time to have a favorite food. With new Grubhub Plus, you get unlimited free delivery and cash back rewards for ordering noodles. And noodles. And noodles. And noodles. Grubhub Plus, free delivery, cash back, and noodles. Hey guy. Hi there. Welcome to Hymns. Should have done it years ago, and I feel like the young stud that I always imagined I was. Outstanding product. Works above and beyond our expectations. This has been a life changer even in just a few weeks. Featured in GQ, Playboy, and Men's Health. Find out what all the buzz is about. Go to 4 slash ed and get started with a free online visit while supplies last.
I'm Jason Hayward. I'm Chris Bryant. I'm Javi Baez. And you're watching Marquee Sports Network. American League in good shape, leading two to nothing, and the breeze still, uh, well, has changed around a little bit, blowing in towards center, toward home plate. By the way, that stolen base by Kelly Gruber, the American League's fourth stolen base, that ties an all-star record, and Lance Parrish is now the catcher. So Parrish and Thigpen, the new battery. But don't discount these National League hitters, starting with Will Clark. Bobby Thickpin's teammate at Michigan at Mississippi State. And they battle one another. Clark is one for two in this game. And ball one. Bottom of the seven. Two to nothing, the American League. There's a strike as he keeps it away from the left-handed batter. In college, Thickpin hit behind Will Clark. Clark hit fourth, Thickpin fifth. It Mississippi State. Rafael Palmero is the third three hole hitter. And as we said earlier, Jeff Brantley, who was in this game earlier, and we'll try to get a report on Brantley and the condition of Jeff. Thick pen. Two ball and a strike and makes it three and one. This pitcher is from St. Petersburg, Florida. Chatting with him the other day, and he was very near the Stop track down there, Derby Lane, which we frequent during spring training. Will Clark trying to get on base for the second time. Thrilling play into the top of the seventh, and now Clark hits it on the ground to Ozzie. Wide, but out of first base to start the bottom of the seventh. Oz again, long noted for his glove in the American League, is hitting 330 this year. Product of a Walt Reniak. He can pick it. 12 in a row have been retired by American League pitchers now. Oz again throws out Will Clark and Tim Wallach bats for the first time this evening. And a little bouncer the pitcher has to cover. And does for the second out as he took the throw from Fielder. That's 13 National Leaguers in a row set down. What's Pat O'Brien doing here in the seventh inning? Jack him with Harry Carey, and Harry, you sound pretty good. Why, why not? Why not? Hey, Jack and Tim, how you doing? You should be at, up here with me in the uh, announcer's booth. Well, my good friend Wayne Messmer. Let me ask you this. What does it mean to Chicago to have the All-Star game right here in your Wrigley Field? Oh, it's great. It's, well, look at this ballpark. Look at these people, greatest fans in the world. And uh, if you're going to play an All-Star game in an intimate ballpark where everybody's uh, your friend almost, you, you, can, uh, you can tell the expression on everybody's face, this would be it. Look where Conseco hit one yesterday. <laughs> 455 feet. Harry, Harry could talk about baseball all day here. We're going to throw it back to Jack. Hey, thanks, right. Harry. Good to see you, Pat. Darrell Strawberry is up with a 1 1 count, two out, and unfortunately for the National League, nobody on base as they trail 2 to nothing in the bottom of the seventh. Foul ball puts Strawberry in the hole. 1 and 2. What a resurgence Darrell has had this season. In his last 100 at bats, he's hitting 394 with 13 home runs. He has been the main reason the Mets have surged. Thick Ben has him set up. Got him. 14 National Leaguers in a row have been retired. Now we have played seven innings. And the American League's on top, two to nothing. Every generation has its heroes who see past themselves and the risks and the fear to run toward the danger with courage and compassion. Touching lives, saving lives, changing us all. Every generation has its heroes and you are ours. Advocate Aurora Health. My name is April and I am a caregiver. 
I've been with Nell now for two and a half years, and I, I just feel like I am making a difference in her life. I know how much her family relies on me being there. It's about the bond that we form. At care.com, you can find the senior care help your family needs. Search from lots of local caregivers with profiles, reviews, and more. It costs less than you think. At 98 years old, she's enjoying her life. Find the help you need. Care.com. Let's pray. As we all hunker down in these tough times, grass keeps growing. Livestock still needs to be fed. And there's plenty of hauling to do. Mahindra is here to help. Visit whymahindra.com from the safety of your home and build your own tractor. Your Mahindra dealer will give you a quote and deliver to your land. Mahindra, the official tractor of tough. Get no payments for 90 days and zero down, 0% 0 financing during Mahindra's spring sale. Your brain is an amazing thing. But as you get older, it naturally begins to change, causing a lack of sharpness or even trouble with recall. Thankfully, the breakthrough in Prevagen helps your brain and actually improves memory. The secret is an ingredient originally discovered in jellyfish. In clinical trials, Prevagen has been shown to improve short-term memory. Prevagen, healthier brain, better life. Hey, this game isn't over. We're going into the eighth inning, and you can never count on a victory here in Wrigley Field until it's nailed down. This is Randy Myers, who is the eighth National League pitcher of the night. The new first baseman is Bobby Bonilla with Will Clark out of the game at the moment. And there, Bobby brought the first baseman's glove. He knew this figured in the plans. The leadoff batter is George Bell. Bell is 0 for 1 with a strikeout in this game. The American League tries to get more. One and one the count. On deck, it's Kirby Puckett. We'll have fun watching him. American League sitting pretty at the moment. Two to nothing, top of the eighth. And we're sitting pretty now weather-wise. No more rain. Bell hits it high in the air for Strawberry. Ball carrying a little bit differently now. There's one out. You know, we're looking at Randy Myers. He used to be with the Mets. John Franco is now with the Mets. He used to be with Cincinnati. Last year, Randy Myers had a mustache. <laughs> Now he does it, but this year John Franco has the mustache. So that is <laughs> that is genuine. Nice going, guys. That's great. That is genuinely trading places. I wonder if those two <laughs> did that on purpose. How about that? They were traded for one another, and here they are in the All-Star game together. Batting is Kirby Puckett. There's a strike from Randy Myers. Myers has 17 saves, and look at those figures. A typical Kirby Puckett year and for a while he was the highest paid player in baseball but not long pops it up foul and it comes back and out of play Kirby Puckett was the highest paid player in baseball for about 24 hours last winter as a matter of fact the highest paid player changed nine times last year American League's leading hitter last year and only the second right-handed hitter since 1970, second right-handed hitter to lead the American League in hitting. Myers is throwing 90 miles an hour. He's ahead on the count. Ball one, one and two. Free swinging Kirby Puckett. Not up there to walk, especially in his hometown. It's a base hit. When you can hit, you can hit. Oh, oh the ball got past Strawberry. And Puckett with one out is going to end up at third base, and that's important. Strawberry gets the ball back in. Probably a single and an error. And the fans here get after Strawberry. They don't like any of the Met players, not just Darrell. Well, they were, they were cheering Darrell in the sixth inning or in the seventh inning because he made the throw home. They were booing him yesterday. This ball gets by Strawberry. It hasn't been scored. It is a hit and an error, a singer, single, 
and an error on Daryl Strawberry. Bucket's a good mutter. He shoots around to third base with one out. The infield has to come in. And here is ball one to Cecil Fielder, who is batting for the second time this evening. Fly it out to center his first time. So a base hit by Puckett. Two to nothing. The American League already leading. And the count goes to ball two. Fielder takes ball three. It was a single and an error charge to Strawberry, and that was the first error of the evening. And you can bet your bottom dollar that Cecil is going to be swinging on 3 and 0, oh, and Myers knows that. But he took ball four. There have been two, four, five. That's the sixth walk given to the American League to go with their seven hits. And we have a pinch hitter with men at first and third with one out. Here's Roger Craig trying to figure out how to stop this American League attack. Alan Trammell is the pinch hitter. That's the first at bat for the Detroit Tigers shortstop. Batting here in the eighth inning. Mentioned through the 80s, you talk about the gifted shortstops in the American League. Cal Ripken Jr., Robin Yount when he played there for the Brewers, and Alan Trammell. Trammell, the MVP in 1984. Robin Yount, the MVP in 1982 as a shortstop. National League needs, wants the double play ball. Trammell wants at least the fly ball. There's a strike for Myers. As a matter of fact, Cal Ripken Jr. sandwiched in between there in 1983. So it was Yount, Ripken, and Trammell. Three consecutive MVP shortstops in the American League, 82, 3, and 4. It's been a strong position. Mm -hmm. First and third one out. Trammell hits a pop fly for the second baseman Alomar. Two out as Roberto takes it down. Now the National League can keep the deficit to two runs. Here's a fellow who played a big part in the run scoring. It was a base hit by Sandy Alomar in the top of the seventh, a pinch hit by this batter, Lance Parrish, and a two run single. By Franco in the seventh. First and third, two out, and a strike. Parrish has made it clear that he loves the American League. He signed as a free agent with the Philadelphia Phillies for. Played over there for two years, was unsuccessful in the National League, back in the American League, and here another All Star assignment. Count goes to strike two on Parrish. The base hit by Franco that drove in the runs with a double, two run double. And he subsequently was thrown out at the plate to end the seventh. And now the American League with a two out threat in the eighth. Pop fly foul near the stands and Tantalizingly out of reach, only two rows back. Bobby Bonilla couldn't get close enough. So Parrish has another chance to add to the 2 0 lead here in the eighth inning. That foul ball perilously close to the commissioner's seat. If you remember in last year's World Series in game four, Will Clark toppling over the railing and into the lap of Commissioner Faye Vincent. <laughs> the commission. Yeah, he's going to sign the ball. All right. The American League has already left seven and hit into two double plays. But they lead two to nothing in the eighth. Paris gets this ball up in the air. It'll ride out, but the pitch is in the air for ball one. Over at third base, running the bases, it is Kirby Puckett. And on at first, Cecil Fielder. And Lance Parrish, the batter, one and two the count. A 
late swing and a foul by Parrish, who just stays up there with that foul ball. The American League has out hit the National League seven to one. Fastball on the outside corner off the mask of Sosha, the glove in the mask. And another foul. Now the wind has changed, and this is the way the hitters have been hoping it would be blowing all night. It's blowing out toward left and into left center. When we started the game, it was blowing toward the right field foul line. It might have affected the hitting early. But for the most part, it's been an overpowering American League pitching staff. One and two to Parrish, and another foul. First and third, two out, two to nothing. The American League on top. We're in the visitors' half of the eighth inning, Sosha's caught the entire game. Myers throws high and away, two and two. Myers reaches down to get a little dry sand for his pitching hand. He is the eighth National League pitcher tonight. And ball three. Now the runner will go from first. That's Fielder. And Bobby Bonilla is now going to drop behind him. And two and fielder will go with the pitch with two out. He walked him and the bases are loaded. First base umpire said he did not swing. So Julio Franco comes up with the base of loaded two out. Well, the last time Julio was the better it was first and third and nobody out. Rob Dibble on the mound in relief of Jeff Brantley and 0 2 fastball away. And predictably, Franco hits it to right field. Not something you could really call a mistake by Dibble, I don't suppose. A little bit too much of the plate, but you got to give credit to Franco. Good piece of hitting. Well, he's driven in two. He'd like to get some more. Base had loaded two out. There have been seven walks handed out by the National League hurlers. Myers just missed with that one. Third base, it is Puckett. Down at second base, Fielder. And the runner at first is Parrish. And the batter, Julio Franco. Ball two. So should have the mound of Myers has walked two and given up a base hit to Puckett in this inning. The league hasn't scored here in the eighth, but they have this base and loaded two out opportunity. With Dibble pitching, the outfield was shaded around toward right center, and Lynn Dykstra, even though a left-hander's out there now, is still around toward right center. Frank on 2-0, oh, took a strike 2-1. Sometimes the velocity of a pitcher determines how you play, in it, play the hitter, and because Myers throws so hard, the outfield, a tendency to shift around toward the right part of the, of the outfield. Franco could blow this game wide open. He flies it into right, and Strawberry has a beat on it. And the inning is over. And now the American League has left 10, but they lead 2 to nothing in the bottom of the eighth. Every weekday night, tune into the stadium. Baseball Commissioner Rob Manfred wants to play as many games as possible as soon as possible. If this 2020 Cubs team wants to get back to where they were at 2016, I think David Ross is going to be the right guy to lead them there. You're either going to get through this or you're going to grow through this. And I think it's a great chance for coaches, business people, everyone to get better at your personal craft. Marquee Sports Network will bring you every sim game until real baseball returns. The Stadium, weeknights at 6.30 on Marquee Sports Network.
Tell us we can't, and we'll prove you wrong. Knock us down, and we'll get right back up. Call us risk pickers. Misfits. Bad boys. But we know what we want, and it feels like American muscle. Looks like advanced engineering, and smells like fresh, cut grass. Bad boy. Mow with an attitude. America, your neighbor needs you. Let's help each other through the coronavirus crisis. Marquee Sports Network is partnering with the Salvation Army to deliver food, shelter, and hope in your community. Go to MarqueeSportsNetwork.com and click to make a donation to the Salvation Army, where all proceeds stay right here in your area to help your neighbors in need. Join Marquee Sports Network, the Salvation Army, and Sinclair Cares, your neighbor needs you campaign. has only one hit and that was a first inning single by Will Clark. Good year people with a long evening up in the rain clouds. We appreciate the pictures they have sent down to us. We have a new pitcher. It's Chuck Finley. He's the Angels top winner and he leads the American League in earned run average 2.54 and a record of 11 and 4. Pretty good man to protect the lead Tim. His first all star appearance he made last year's team but he didn't appear. And here batting for the first time is Bobby Bonilla. Gruber with a play to his left and he throws him out. You know that's 15 National League batters in a row have been retired. The American League pitching has just dominated tonight. You saw Wallach a while ago get ready to field a ground ball and now it's Kelly Gruber. The National League really <laughs> I mean this offense hasn't hit a lot of balls hard tonight. Here is Greg Olson and Tim McCarver and I agreed agreed before the game that this fellow is probably the most bubbly of all the all stars who are here. He is the one most impressed. He's had a tough career again getting to the big leagues. He was a six year minor league free agent and now the Atlanta Braves are reaping the benefits of his production. And he's hit six home runs, driven in 25 runs, batting 289, and he's done the job behind the plate for them. He missed the first six days of the season. Ernie Witt, John Russell were the catchers. Russell was released, and then the Braves drafted Phil Lombardi from the Mets. Strike to the count. Lombardi quit, and they called. Greg Olson back up so they really went through four catchers before they got to Olson here he is now he's an all star it's a great they, story and they also had Jody Davis down there with Atlanta at the start of the year Olson in the hole however and he strikes out as Finley turned the ball over and gets his first strikeout and that's 16 in a row set down by American League hurlers talking to American League hitters they say that Chuck Finley has as wicked a split finger fastball as any pitcher in the American League and that's what Olson went down on I mean that was a hard vicious I mean that was a downer Finley 6 6 2 12 only La Russa can afford to look a bit smug now two out here in the bottom of the eighth inning American League leading two to nothing. Here's that pitch once again to Greg Olson with a count one and two. Watch this ball go down. Wow. wow. Here is Barry Bonds trying to figure out this hurler. Two balls, no strikes, the count with two out. A wonderful season for Barry Bonds, and his dad is here, Bobby. And this is the first at bat for Bonds. Well, the second at bat, he's 0 for 1. Fly to right his first time, and that's ball three. There are two out. 16 in a row have been set down. Finley pumps a strike in there. 
This season of his 11 and 4 no accident he was 16 and 9 last year. He is 6 6 weighs 212 he can bring it. And he throws it long walks bombs and opens the door a little bit with two out here in the eighth. And guess who's up. One of the cubbies. There's Tony LaRusso. Quite so comfortable now as it was a moment ago as Dunstan stands in and the wind is blowing out toward left and Dunstan could tie this. Well, that'd be wonderful, wouldn't it, to tie it and have some extra innings here tonight? I don't know if the National League pitching staff would hold out. They only have two more pitchers left after Randy Myers. Runner at first. Bond's a good base stealer. Ball one. He probably won't be gambling with two men out and his club two runs behind. He has stolen 24 bases. Yeah, but no way he runs right here. You got to let him hit. The initials on the back of the helmet of Sean Dunstan are the first initials of his two daughters. And I've chatted with Sean about his family, and he is really thrilled with the life that he is leading right now. Runner at first, two out. One to the shortstop, Gill. Force out, and the inning is over. And still, the National League has only one hit, and they still trail two to nothing. You might take something for your heart, your joints, or your digestion. So, why wouldn't you take something for the most important part of you, your brain? With an ingredient originally discovered in jellyfish, Prevagen has been shown in clinical trials to improve short-term memory. Prevagen, healthier brain, better life. Well, this is overwhelming. Where to start? Listen to celebrity decorators with their million dollar budgets and enormous staff? That's realistic. Or just step into a store? Oh, no. There's a better way. You've skimmed catalogs. You've browsed through blogs. You know what you like when you see it. Artful contemporary, Scandinavian minimalism, organic modern. You know what you want? Overstock's where you find it. Now let's get to work. A sofa, a floor lamp, an area rug. Never forget the area rug. Everything you need with free shipping every day. Easy, right? Getting it done with Overstock, where quality costs less. There has never been a better time to have a favorite food. With new Grubhub Plus, you get unlimited free delivery and cash back rewards for ordering noodles. And noodles. And noodles. And noodles. Grubhub Plus, free delivery, cash back, and noodles. When allergies attack, the excitement fades. Allegra helps you say yes with the fastest non-drowsy allergy relief. For 24-hour relief from your indoor and outdoor allergies, say yes to life's possibilities. Allegra, live your life, not your allergies. At Domino's, we pride ourselves on handcrafted pizza. But after leaving our 450-degree ovens, the only hands that touch them are yours. Mix and match any two or more for just $5.99 each and get them with contactless delivery from Domino's. I just love hitting the open road and telling people that Liberty Mutual customizes your insurance. So you only pay for what you need. Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. Now we have a new pitcher for the National League, and it's John Franco. And this is a record, folks. This is the ninth National League pitcher used in this game this evening. And Greg Olson takes over behind the plate. We showed you the trading places. Greg Olson now trading places with Mike Socia, who started the game. John Franco in relief of Randy Myers, for whom he was traded last winter. Eyes again, 0 for 1 is going to be 0 for 2. Roberto Alomar throws him out here to start the ninth inning. You know what Roger Craig has really done? He has used nine pitchers and he is saving Neil Heaton in case the National League ties it in the bottom of the ninth. The reason for that, Heaton's last start was July 4th, six days ago. So Roger, if the National League ties it in the ninth, Neil Heaton will just be a starting pitcher. And he might pitch for a long time the way runs have been hard to come by here tonight. This is Kelly Gruber. Gruber has a walk and a stolen base and Dennis Eckersley is warming up in the bullpen. What, how much better shape can the American League be in? 
They have out hit the National League seven to one. National League has made the game's only error. No, the visitors have been unkind here tonight. One out in the top of the ninth. Franco's pitch is fouled away. One ball, two strikes. Franco has hit his stride here in the 1990 season. He is 4 and 0. Earn run average of less than 2 and 17 saves. So Gruber has his hands full trying to hit this lefty. Both managers have done a fine job of getting a lot of players into the game, which is what the fans enjoy. The ball shot through the legs of Olsen. Olsen says, no wonder I can't hit him, I can't catch him. Two and two the count. The umpire says, please try to catch those. Two and two. And that's foul just outside first. John Dunstan, a creature of habit down there at the shortstop position when the pitcher gets ready to throw the ball. He almost lines up his position. Sean lining up first base. That's to remind him where it is, I guess. <laughs> Three and two the count. I'll tell you, with his arm, he doesn't need to line it up. There it is. Reminds himself where uh -huh. he's going to throw the ball. Mm -hmm. Three and two. Shot at the center fielder, Dykstra, two up. Franco's trying to keep it a two-run game. We talked about the Mississippi State connection tonight with Clark and, and Thickpin. We also talked about the University of Michigan with Larkin and Sabo. Well, John Franco and, and Viola, Frank Viola, both attending St. John's. Right near Shea Stadium, Flushing, New York. And a lot of people from the New York City area, including those two you just mentioned, Bobby Bonilla and Sean Dunstan. Uh huh. Conseco, he's had a walk. He is 0 for 3. Ball one from John Franco. See, Franco has to keep the ball down and Conseco to be effective. And I think this is a dangerous hitter for Franco right here. Conseco has not looked good tonight. see more of this this fall with Conseco at the plate and Franco on the mound. A Maybe. lot of things have to happen for that to come about. Ball two. You can see Olsen having difficulty catching Franco and some kids and, and some older folks waiting for Conseco to loft one out in their area. I think this is the best chance tonight that they have to get a, a ball over the fence or into the street. Low ball pitcher, low ball hitter. And in the dirt, not that low, three and one. With two out in the top of the ninth. And we'll see what Franco's approach is on a three one pitch. John Franco has a one, two, three inning, bottom of the ninth, two to nothing, the American League. When America's service members move forward, they're unstoppable, unstoppable in their mission. Since 2003, Wounded Warrior Project has advocated for these heroes. Our mission is helping injured veterans achieve their highest ambition with free services in mental health, career counseling, and long-term rehabilitative care. And warriors never pay a penny for our programs. They're unstoppable heroes. Support warriors today at woundedwarriorproject.org.
Without Bernie's, majority of these students probably would not have any books at home. The more that they're able to read and write and communicate with others, the more successful they're going to be getting a job, going to college, all those things we want for them in the future. Having a book in your hand and, you know, reading it and exploring is virtually impossible without Bernie's books. Let's pray. As we all hunker down in these tough times, grass keeps growing, livestock still needs to be fed, and there's plenty of hauling to do. Mahindra is here to help. Visit whymahindra.com from the safety of your home and build your own tractor. Your Mahindra dealer will give you a quote and deliver to your land. Mahindra, the official tractor of tough. Get no payments for 90 days and zero down, 0% financing during Mahindra's spring sale. You're watching Cubs Classics presented by Premagen. It's 1990s week. Let's get back to the action. All right, Jack, thank you. We are in the catacombs at Wrigley to talk about the lights at Wrigley. You know the story. They didn't have lights here for 74 years. Last two seasons, they've had lights. Kind of controversial. Uh, we're cleared to go in here. You've seen the lights, I know, but I want to show you something I bet you haven't seen. These, my friends, are the switches that turn on the lights that ended exclusive daytime baseball at Wrigley. And all the traditionalists, I bet, would love to come and turn these off. You know, I lived in Chicago for several years, and I have a lot of friends here who would love to have me switch one of these off. I'll think about it. You wouldn't. You that's, wouldn't a, that's a switch. Yeah, that's a switch. That's a loose cannon. Pat O'Brien, he's a grenade with a pin bolt, and he's found the light switch. Let's hope. He restrains himself. The new pitcher is Dennis Eckersley. What better man for La Russa to run out there with a 2 and one record, 25 saves, and Dykstra leading it off in the bottom of the ninth. That's ball one. Dykstra can work here for a walk, but Eckersley doesn't do that very often. Two walks in 36 and a third innings this year. Two. Lenny Dykstra leading it off here in the bottom of the ninth. And there's a strike. It's one and one. Roberto Alomar will follow. So the National League has to get a runner on base to have a chance. One and one. Ball two. Lenny Dykstra leading the. National League and the major leagues and hitting with a 360 mark. He was over 400 for a long time in the early part of the season. 462 on base percentage, too. And he's the major. Two and two. Now he'll have to start swinging. Two and two to Lenny Dykstra. Three times he has flied out. And a foul ball keeps Dykstra up there. All-star game history, we've had some low hit games, but here the National League has had only one hit. And there's a hit. So Dykstra had some excitement of the game with a leadoff single here in the ninth inning. He is on base for the first time. Leave it to him. He does what he has to do. Ball down and in, and Dykstra rifles it back up the middle. Only the second hit for the National League, and by far the hardest hit ball. Remember, once again, the National League has one pitcher left, and he's warming in the bullpen now, and that's Neil Heaton. Dykstra runs the bases, but they're going to play behind him down there. They don't expect him to run, but he's a daring sort. His fielder plays behind him. 
Roberto Alomar. He's a switch hitter, and there's strike one. Neil Heaton warming up. He of the Pirates enjoying a banner season. And a fly ball into center field, and Puckett's on the move, and that's the first down of the ninth inning. Alomar made a good bid for a base hit, but Puckett grabbed it. And here comes a home run threat. Matt Williams is going to be the batter, and Parrish goes out to talk with his pitcher, and the shortstop comes in. They want to make certain of their approach. How about this for a setting? What a fine young third baseman Matt Williams is. We talked about it before. Babe Ruth with the first all-star home run in Comiskey Park. And Matt Williams not only has 17 home runs, but does a remarkable impersonation of Babe Ruth. Remarkable. He'll be pumping. The wind might help him. We're in the bottom of the ninth. Tying run at the plate. Two to nothing. The American League on top. The American League would like the double play to end this game. Eckersley and now they're holding against Dykstra and ball one to Williams. They like to get him on him breaking stuff. He's a dead fastball hitter. 17 home runs 69 runs batted in leading the National League and runs batted in. A little chopper foul. The coordinating producer of Major League Baseball on CBS is Rick LaCivita. And this evening's telecast directed by Joe Assetti. Pre-game show produced by Ed Gorin. The senior producer of CBS Sports is David Winner. The executive producer of CBS Sports is Ted Shaker. One and one to Matt Williams of the Giants. A little bit low and that's ball two, two and one from Eckersley. Williams was in the home run hitting contest yesterday. Eckersley used to pitch for the Cubs, so he's familiar with this Wrigley Field setting. Two to nothing, the Americans on top. One on, one out. Two and two now. He had his pitch right here, that unusual style. A lot of hitters trigger their swing. Matt Williams triggers his whole body. It's that little rock, hits off his backside. He just came up empty with that one. Two and two, and foul ball keeps him up there. Mad Williams with one swing could tie this affair. Similar career in the first two years, as you see Doug Jones from Cleveland, Randy Johnson, the left-hander from Seattle. Matt Williams, a similar career. Mike Schmidt. Tag on the inside corner. That's the second out of the inning. I tell you, I'm surprised Eckersley came right back in there, but look where Lance Parrish, the catcher, is. Inside corner, and that's where they get him. Usually in a home run situation, you've got a power hitter up there. If you're going to make a mistake, you make it away. But Eckersley, bold and brash here at Wrigley, threw the fastball in the inside corner. Last hope, Tim Wallach. Strike one from Dennis Eckersley. Wallach is 0 for 1. It's not beyond him to tie this game. Dykstra at first two out, and that's strike two in the American League within one strike of a 2 0 shutout. Wallach has a great batting mark career wise against Eckersley. 12 out of 34 with a home run. And a foul ball, and Parrish is back at the screen, but nothing to it. That's how close this game came to ending right there. Oh, and two. You're in a bad spot when Eckersley backs you up on oh two. Eckersley is only the Sixth pitcher for the American League and Tony La Russa. Wallach with an 0 2 count, two out, bottom of the ninth. Runner at first, Dykstra, two to nothing, American League. And a high pop fly stays in play for Fielder. And that's the way this one ends, and the next.
National League has blanked on only two base hits. And they only left four, so they didn't have that many chances. That does it for this edition of Cubs Classics presented by Prevagen. Thanks for watching.